Hey guys, what's up? Thanks for tuning in for another pre-dental video. Today I have eight tips for you for writing your personal statement. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the personal statement. And if this is the first time you're seeing my face, my name's Haley, I am a pre-dental student at Michigan State University. I'm applying this cycle, I'm gonna be a senior next year, and I have a couple DAT prep videos on my channel, and I'm also planning on making videos throughout this whole application process to help you guys and guide you through and give you some of the advice and tips I've picked up over my time so far. So if you are new and that stuff that sounds interesting to you, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe below. I do also make um, college lifestyle kind of content, vlogs, all that. Today I have eight tips for you for writing your personal statement. Just letting you guys know that this video I think can be applicable for dental school, PA school, medical school, optometry school, probably like pharmacy school, probably anything where you're writing a personal statement with the prompt, why do you want to be a blank? And just a quick little disclaimer, I am obviously not a dental student, I'm obviously not on an admissions board or anything, so these are just tips and advice that I've accumulated through my years as a pre-dental student, attending different conferences and events and speakers and speaking with people on admissions and going to my writing center, all that, and also talking to other actual dental students. These are kind of all the advice that stuck up to me and has helped me write my personal statement, so I wanted to share it with you guys. Okay, so the first tip is kind of self-explanatory and that is to keep things personal so they want to know about you they don't want to know a dentist needs to be this a dentist does this i definitely made that mistake in my first couple drafts i would say like leadership is really important in dentistry you don't need to say that just talk about how you are a leader and you don't even need to say i'm a leader because or i have done these leadership activities just show them what you're saying through your actions, like through the descriptive words you're using about the things that you've done, because that's gonna be a lot more effective and it's also gonna save you characters. And for dental school, you only have 4,500 characters, including spaces, enters, tabs, all that, periods, punctuation, all everything to explain why do you wanna be a dentist. So for keeping it personal, you don't want to tell them what a great dentist is or what a dentist does. You wanna show them that you have the characteristics to be a great dentist. They already know what kind of characteristics dentists have or they already know that you need good hand skills to be a dentist but talk about things that you do that involve hand skills and stuff like that is gonna just really elevate your personal statement and if you have a draft that's kind of um how my first one was like i said like oh leadership and dentistry so important and i do these leadership things like reword it to how I'm kind of explaining it and I think you're gonna like it a lot better. Next tip is actually to be humble, but not too humble. And you might have heard that before, but basically this is your personal statement. It's gonna feel really weird writing about yourself and kind of like bragging in a way, but there's definitely like a fine line that you need to be working around. You don't need to use like descriptive words that make it seem like you think you're the greatest person ever, but definitely throw in words in there like passionate and um, <laughs> that's all I got on my mind right now but words that kind of describe you in a great way but aren't like too boastful or anything. If you're reading your personal statement over like a draft and you're noticing those things maybe try to figure out a different word to use so it doesn't seem too boastful but at the same time you don't want to leave anything out you don't want to think oh that's not that important or oh probably a lot of people do that they might not, like you're a very unique person, every single person is different, and you don't want to leave anything out out of just thinking it's not it's special enough or that it's not relevant to dentistry because what they really want to know is that you're not like a robot, you're not someone that all you do is study, like they want to know that you're a complete person and that you're going to be able to connect with people because that's one of the most important things as being a dentist is being able to connect with your patients and make them feel comfortable. And in order to do that, you need to be a normal person. So you want to show them through this personal statement that your interests in dentistry are genuine, they're not about money. You just want to make sure that they can see that you're genuine, you're interested in the profession for the right reasons, and you're a really good person. And I'm sure that all of you are, and it's really hard to kind of sell yourself that way, but just keep working and I know you'll be able to do it. Just for like comparison purposes, I'm on my sixth draft of my personal statement and I was convinced that it was like perfect on my third draft, but then I sent it to some current dental students and they had a lot of feedback, which at first I was like, oh, like, dang it, I don't know if I want to take it, whatever, but I've been working with it and it's been super helpful. I also went to my writing center on campus, so that would be my 
third tip is to utilize your resources. Um, we have a free writing center at Michigan State campus, so I went to see someone there and they were really helpful, not only for grammar, but for content. And if you do know any current devil students, see if they'll read it because that's awesome. They know more and they've kind of talked to their friends about it and they've gone through this whole process. So they're going to have really good advice. And if you don't think you know any dental students, this is a great reason to be involved in your pre-dental club because the seniors that just like matriculated into dental school will be dental students now. And I don't think anyone in dental school would be hesitant to help a pre-dent or especially someone that went to like their same undergrad. So if you can like find them on Facebook and send them a friend request, send them a message, I would almost guarantee that they'd be willing to read your personal statement and give you feedback. So. Don't be scared to like reach out to people. I found that everyone in the whole field of dentistry is generally super, super helpful and supportive and encouraging of pre-dents because they know that you're the future of the profession. And another important thing about who you're gonna have read your personal statement, please, please, please do not have other pre-dental students read your personal statement, especially if you're applying in the same cycle, unless you really, really trust them. I would just be very hesitant about it, be very cautious and smart about what you're doing because it would be terrible to end up in like an academic dishonesty or a plagiarism situation when you're applying for something as important as dental school and especially if you're going through like a Facebook group like the DAT bootcamp Facebook group or something you really should be very hesitant with who you're sharing it with whether or not they're intending to plagiarize they might just get ideas from yours and then start writing theirs three days later and think it's their own and it might not be and admissions can easily notice that and that's not something you want to mess around with. So tip number four, this is kind of figuring out what to write about. Find something unique about yourself and really sell it. For me, and I know a lot of people, you don't might not have kind of this aha moment that's this amazing story to tell or you might not have like more of a sob story or something more. You just might feel more like plain and like simple. But that does not mean you can't write a great personal statement. That does not mean you're not interesting to admissions at all. So just find something unique about yourself and roll with it. For me, I don't even know if I'd say it's that unique, but it's the way that I'm writing it and the personal little anecdotes and stories that I'm throwing in here and there that are making it unique. Because a lot of people might like educating people but they didn't do the exact same thing I did or they didn't have this exact same conversation with someone that I did. So throw in those unique things to make this, again, a very personal statement. Um, one tip that I heard that I kind of did without knowing it is to write your personal statement small. Start small. Don't try to write your entire life story and take up five pages because once you write something, you are going to become very attached to it and it's going to be really hard to even cut out like one word. Like you're going to say, no, I can't just say I'm passionate. I need to say I'm really passionate. Otherwise, they won't know. Start and aim for like around 3,000 characters and then show it to someone that's going to be reading your drafts and say, what do I, what did I leave out? Like, what didn't I include? Do you know, notice anything that I should talk more about? What is like catching your interest? That kind of thing. And then expand on those points or add in like anecdotes and everything to make it exciting to read. All right, so we're on to tip number six. So this is kind of talking about, again, what you should be writing about, but use your space, use your characters to expand on what is not talked about enough in your application. So for dental school, this is actually something that's going to vary for what school you're applying to. But for dental school, you enter your experiences, you can enter as many as you want, extracurricular, volunteering, shadowing, academic enrichment, research, all of that. But for each one, you only get 600 characters to talk about it. Now, most people, that's fine for some of their activities, but if there's something that you've been very involved in, or if you went on this life-changing study abroad, or life-changing medical service trip, or something like that, and you don't feel like you adequately explained it, your personal statement is a great place to include that. I know for me, I touched more on like um, a mentorship program that I'm in, which is part of my volunteering, and I touched more on a medical service trip that I went on because I didn't feel like the message fully came across in my experiences, and it also tied really well into the theme of my personal statement. And mentioning theme, just try to be consistent with what your theme is and kind of hitting on it a little bit in each paragraph so that it makes sense to the reader and um, that jumps in to my seventh tip which is don't be jumping around whether that is from idea to idea at least have like smooth transitions in between them but it's very confusing for a reader if you go out of chronological order you definitely can do that but you need to be a very skilled writer so if that's something you feel like needs to be done you need to break chronological order just to have your ideas flow better together i would really consult someone that's 
skilled in writing whether that be at a writing center or if you know any like English professors or something like that that are willing to help you because you really don't want to confuse the reader and have them mess up your timeline especially when you're talking about this is when I became interested in dentistry. If you say like this was my aha moment and then you go into when I was little I did these things and then in college I did this but also in high school I did this like it's not going to make sense to the reader and it might seem to you like to list them like the most important thing at the beginning to really grab their attention that can make sense but you just have to be really smart about how you're doing it. So to make things simple mine is kept in chronological order and I think that's just been easiest for me as a writer. Alright tip number eight this is the best tip so I hope you've stuck around. But this is that your intro needs to be amazing. I mean, you've probably heard this from all your writing classes, but the intro is what's going to catch the reader's attention. Granted, I assume that admissions teams are going to read your whole personal statement anyways. You want them to remember it, and obviously they would remember the conclusion too, but I think that if you clearly introduce what your theme is going to be in that intro and you really catch their attention, then they're going to remember that throughout the whole page. They're going to be thinking about it. They're going to be like, oh yeah, this is the person that is an artist and they have won all these fairs or they've studied abroad and did art in like Europe or something and if you keep hitting on the artistry in every single paragraph and then wrap it up really well they are going to remember that and I think that's kind of why this tip number eight is twofold it was that the intro needs to be really amazing and you need to wrap it up well and by wrap it up well I mean that you should reference if you did have like a main theme but also subcategories make sure you reference those subcategories again again for like why you want to be a dentist if it is like hands-on work and artistry make sure you mention both you don't want to like leave anything out because then the reader will be like why did you even mention it if it's clearly not even that important so make sure your themes are clear and that they're really emphasized in your intro and your conclusion. There's a couple ways that um, I was recently told that can make your intro kind of eye-catching and exciting. So that could be just like a one sentence phrase at the beginning that's just kind of obscure that not how most people like please don't start it I want to be a dentist because or dentistry is great because just because you could imagine that's how most people are going to start there. So if you can avoid it Either you could do like a quote, you could start with a story, you could start with one word, you could start with one sentence that's just a little bit unique, something like that to catch their attention. But it's also important to have the last sentence of that intro paragraph be really hard hitting as well. Not necessarily, it doesn't need to be the same as the first sentence, but more of like a thesis statement in a way. Again, this is just about writing any paper, the intro, last sentence, thesis statement. It should be kind of foreshadowing um, your paper and that was something I found difficult to do with my personal statement because I was trying to keep things in chronological order and at the end of my intro when I was just a child I didn't know how I want to impact dentistry I just knew it'd be a cool job so it was hard for me to keep it chronological as well as like foretelling but I managed a way to do it and there's definitely a way you can do it especially if you're going to be consulting like writing centers and everything and using all your resources all right, so that's all the tips that I have for you guys. I hope that you found this super helpful and I know you're all going to write amazing personal statements with or without my help, but I hope that some of these tips or at least one of these tips gives you something to think about when you're writing yours. So if you did like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe down below for more dental school related videos. If there is any more sections of the DAT you want me to talk about, I can. I talked about the ones that I felt like I had the most to say about, but if you do wanna know about any PAT or the chemistries or math, let me know and I can make a video about it. But I have one for general DAT studying, I have one for biology, and I have one for reading. So I'll link all of those below and I'm also planning on doing some more application videos. So if that's something you're interested, please subscribe, turn on your notifications, and let me know in the comments or um, DM me on Instagram or comment something on my Instagram so that I know that you're looking forward to it and I can try to get those out as soon as possible. Thanks again for watching and I hope you have an awesome day.